Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. Ever since we dreamed of this project about a year and a half ago, the only person who knew what it was gonna look like inside was Jordan. It's in his noggin. So wouldn't it be cool if we can get inside his brain to see what the vinyl vision is gonna look like for upstairs in that garage? Well, he's actually been working with an animator who's one of our viewers. So through the power of 3D modeling and rendering, we get to peek inside Jordan's head. So without further ado, let's roll it. Wow, weren't those amazing? Chris spent a ton of time and energy on the renderings. Absolutely love him. Give him a big W, Chris, below in the comments. Now we're getting really, really close to insulation and drywall, but before we get there, there are a couple of framing details we absolutely have to nail, pun intended, before we get there. Let's put on our tool bags, head upstairs, get to work. Framing? Stud pack, you should have been done with framing months ago. Well, we would have been if Jordan doesn't keep coming up with all these crazy ideas. So what do we have left? Well, remember above the stairway, we basically have a mechanical closet in that little attic. And we didn't finish that wall all the way to the bottom of the trusses because we were working up there. Needed room to get the duct work, all our wiring and the equipment in that attic space. So now we have to build that wall, but we need access over here to the bathroom exhaust fan. We definitely need access in the middle to get to the ERV to change the filter, clean it, adjust the controls, etc. And we probably need access over here on the left for the network and maybe even some storage for Jordan. Because remember, the whole bottom of that, the floor is zipped. So we can put up anything there that we want. And there's no storage in here. And there's no storage in this space. So there's a lot going on with this wall and we have to make a little recess at the top of it to accommodate that recessed LED that you guys saw in that awesome rendering. So a lot of details up there, gang. Let's start with detail number one, the access panels. So we knew we needed some massive access doors. Jordan went online and he found the Williams Bros, the Williams Brothers, the world's largest access door store. He reached out to them, customer service was great, and they made us three of these massive doors. Here's the box, you can get a feel of how big it is, and they give us a great price. Customer service was amazing, but how's the build quality? We don't know. Let's crack it open and check it out. All right, here we go, bud. Look at this guy. Oh yeah. Aluminum? Yep. No plastic? Nope. And what is this? That is the drywall oh, the door. It comes with the drywall already in the the uh, the door part. Yep. And, and so this must be the frame around the outside? Yeah, and that is 5 inch drywall. You can specify. Man, I thought you found some kind of like plastic thing online, but this is awesome. Look That's at, for real. It is for real. It looks like a cargo hatch on a like a yacht. <laughs> Look at this guy. So we have a mud in flange, right? The drywall comes right to here and yep. it all disappears. You actually screw that to the framing. And let's check out the back side. What do we got here? Oh, there's some, okay, so that's a push-pull latch. You push on the door and it comes out. Is that how that works? Yep, and since it's so big, they actually needed it to install these catches. Oh, like a tether. If you a get tether. a small enough door, you don't need these, but. Oh, and then it lifts off right here. Right. And look at this detail. They even put these little caps over the screws over the self-drilling screws. Right. That's amazing. Look at the welds welded together. This thing's going to be great. Now, let me ask you this. So I've got the catches at the bottom, but probably goes like this, right? We right. tip out towards me. Right. All right, we got three of these. So now that we have these, we can frame that wall around these. That was the big holdup, right? We didn't know how big these were or where our framing needed to be. Great find, bud. Let's get started on that wall so we can get an inspection on this job. So step number one, we had to measure this wall. It is 206 and 7 eighths. Step number two, go downstairs, cut the bottom plate and the top plate. Done, we already did it. Step number three, find the middle. What's the middle of 206 and 7 eighths? 
That's pretty easy to do in your head, 103 and 7 sixteenths, but I don't usually do it that way. I know that 206 and 7 eighths is real close to 206, which is easily divisible by 2, 103. I pull 103 from each side. I get this mark and this mark, and then just visually, I find the middle. Boom, there we go. That's the middle of the center access door. So now we just need to know our rough opening. So imagine this piece of foam packing is our two by four. On the bottom of the door, these clips are gonna sit on our framing just like that. On the sides, we need to account for this latch right here. We can't make our framing tight because then that's gonna hit our framing. So I just gave ourselves a half an inch. On the top, we need to account for these screws. So I already did that. And we got the measurement of our rough opening. We wrote it down 49 by 24 and a half. Let's go back to our framing material and lay those out. So here's the center of our access panel, half of 49, 24 and a half. Make a mark there. Oh look, we got a stray drywall screw from my bag. That's a powerful magnet. And then 49 on this end. Put the square. Boom, and over here. That's our first stud. Let's lay those out and then figure out the next two on either end. All right, gang, for our side pieces, we could just put that door centered on the remaining space, but wouldn't it be cool if we could incorporate it into the design of the building? So let's walk over to the wall and see what we can find. There's nothing really on the left-hand side, but we have this door into the upstairs apartment on the right. Wouldn't it be cool if this edge of the access panel lined up visually with the edge of the door? That's perfect, and I think that's what we need to do. So if we come down here, I've already made a mark. 11 inches from the sill plate is gonna be the edge of the door. This is gonna be our door, and behind it, right here, is our door frame or our door jam. So since I have that mark, I know I can slide this over. We accounted for half an inch of framing. Remember my two by four? It's gonna be behind it like that, a half an inch right there. So now our framing is gonna be half an inch less than that. Our framing is gonna be right there. 10 and a half. Let's go lay it out and finally start building that wall. Our bottom and our top plate are all marked and we thought about building this thing on the ground and lifting it into place. Jordan, Rad and I could do that. We have the Smurf tubing over here and we have some Romex over here, so it's just gonna be easier to build it in place and notch around those as we go. So let's attach our bottom plate to the top of this wall, our top plate to the bottom of the trusses, and then we can start on the studs. But here's our bottom plate for above the door. I just visually marked these two lines so we can clear these two wires. I'm gonna bring it down off the ladder. We're gonna cut it with a circular saw, knock out that block, and this guy's ready to install. Here's our first little sill plate. We're gonna space it back an inch and a half. Why in the world are we doing that? I'm not telling you. You gotta watch the end of the video to find out why. We've got all our little joists marked. Remember those little two by fours? We put under here to hold this up. We've got those marked. Oh, double shot. And I already got this side lined up. Boom. Boom. All right, bud, let's grab that long one, put it up. Then we'll get this one finally ready for some studs. All right guys, bottom plates are in. Got our laser set up to project the face of our bottom plate straight up to the bottom of our trusses. But we really can't use that, right? Because our laser's right here. I made a pencil mark so you can see it a little better when I obscure the laser. Let's take this top plate and we're gonna put it on my pencil mark. Now look where the laser is. If I put this on the line on the truss, it's gonna kick the top of our wall out towards me. We want this back like that. Now this corner of that two x four top plate is perfectly in line with the face of the bottom one. So we're gonna take me, Jordan, and Rad, and we're gonna line these up to our laser, nail it in the studs, and our wall will be perfectly plumb. All right, I've got the level in my left hand against this wall. Project this edge up. So Rad's got our top plate butted to the level. Then he's just gonna line it up so the laser just kisses that corner. Yeah, and maybe raise your uh, right hand side. Get it as straight as we can. Yep, 
You like that? Yeah. We'll just continue that the whole way. I'm gonna put one in it so we can pivot it. All right, bud. So whatever it is right here, yeah, just get the same. I'm gonna put the laser, I'm gonna put the level down. Right, guys bottom plate top plate all installed now there's only two things left two bits of information we need to finish this wall the length of our studs that's easy right you measure from the top of here to our corner we already did that got it on our cut list they're within an eighth of an inch of each other really happy with that the second piece of information we need is the angle of our cut remember the measure app on your phone has a level feature built in right there put it on our truss 32 degrees Let's head downstairs, cut our 12 studs. Somebody got mad at you last time you used your iPhone for that feature. What do you got to say to that guy? Somebody got mad at me? Yeah. What do they want me to do? Actually, it's 33. I was on the lens. Uh, I have no comment to people that get mad at me. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Start building this wall. Okay. All right, gang, all our studs are in. Now it's time to put in this little baby header to frame out the top of our access panel. Remember, our rough opening is 24 and a half, so we cut two. Call them a jack stud at 24 and a half, but we're gonna use them as a spacer. That way we're not trying to hold up a tape measure, nail that thing to a line. You know what I'm talking about. Let's get this one nailed. My hand, my left hand is out of the way. Beautiful, I'll go down to Jordan's end. I think I can get through the end of this one. Can I get there, Jordan? I think so. Got it. All right, I'll put one more. <laughs> Just pull these out. I'll put one more nail in each. We'll roll the scaffolding down and get all these guys in and go on to our next step. Wasn't the plan to have that flat there? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Say that again? Wasn't that supposed to lay flat right here above the door? It was. We were going to center it on the door like this. Now our access panel is there, right? Because we wanted them all to be the same. So I think what we're going to do, we'll take this duct loose and we'll put it right here. Won't that look cool? Oh, yeah. If there's a slot right here and that way it's minimalized right it's it's uh what's the word i'm looking for it's minimalist modern it's hidden yeah uh, i like that and cool. that's a good solution cool a little audible on the play that's right all right let me finish getting this guy out of here we'll move the scaffolding down there finish this all right guys we have our rough openings for our access panels complete but we do need to fill this in right here. Remember earlier in the video, we mentioned that there was a reason we put this part of the wall an inch and a half back from the main wall down here. We're just about ready to show you. But see this laser line right here? There's gonna be a thin strip of drywall all across here first. And we need somewhere to nail that to. So we rip these on the table saw. And it's gonna fit in there just like that and give us plenty of backing for our drywall. We may even need to put a small piece right here Remains to be seen, but let's put this one in and take a look at it. Check it out, gang. Our filler piece is in, and it looks awesome. And we realized once we installed this that we don't need that little strip right here. This is plenty. Imagine my hand is a piece of drywall. They can get a couple of screws in there, and they're going to be great as the drywall installers. Drywall this place. Can't wait for that. So what's our next step? Well, in a traditional build, we'd be done, right? Put in our access panel frames, move on to our next step. But this is not... A traditional build you all know that we have some pretty crazy ideas and one of them is the led lighting at the top of this wall and the bathroom wall over there and how we're going to implement that well we made a drawing for you so we can make it as clear as possible so here's our truss i'm going to push that up now you can see our 5 8 drywall on the ceiling a piece of 5 8 right here on this wall but remember we've got this led 
So we're gonna build this little ledge. So when the LED shines up, it's gonna illuminate this whole corner. It's gonna look awesome. And the drywall on the wall right here is gonna come up and hide the track and the lens and everything else and make it disappear. Can't wait to see how cool that's gonna look. But we need this little inch and a half ledge right here. And this ledge is gonna be some two by material. And remember, it's gonna be an inch and a half wide. Remember at the beginning of the video, we pushed this wall back an inch and a half. So when we put that two by material on this wall to make the ledge for the LED, the surface of this wall and this wall are now gonna be flush. We just gotta install a two by all the way across, fill in right here where our studs are. And I think Jordan, we can call this wall done. Right, so let's do it, huh? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, gang, first step for this LED code, we set up our line laser on the far wall, and as you can see, we've got a nice level line right here, and we made it four inches below the truss. We don't want to get it too close, because this is going to be too bright, right? The accent is going to be too bright. Didn't want to go too low, because then it was going to be washed out. So we thought four inches was perfect. So that laser line represents the top of the two-by that the LED is going to sit on. But check it out. If I put a two by four there, now I'm inside the frame for our access panel. So things are getting really tight. So we need to rip a two by to go right there. The number is one and seven eighths. Let's head downstairs to the saw stop, rip that two by four. All right, guys, this wall is all padded out. We have our little ledge here following our laser line. That's where our LED is going to be shining up on our wall and our ceiling. It's going to look insane. Got all this padded out for our three access panels. And we got our blocking over here for the drywall corner. Just have to clean up a couple of wires, move this intake for the ERV. And one more thing we got to do. We got that little corner over there, that triangular piece on the end. Jordan, why don't you all roll me over there? We'll knock that one out. All right, guys, we got this little triangle framed in really fast. We just used some scraps we had laying up there, worked out perfect. We put a piece on top for our drywall nailer for our ceiling drywall. So now I think what we want to do, I want to, I really like to put it in one of the frames, Jordan Rad. What do y'all think? I want to see how it works. Yeah. So come on over here. We got one set up on the floor. And what we got to do, we're going to have to drill and countersink this aluminum frame. I've already got those sides drilled. Let me go ahead and finish this last side. We'll countersink it and install it and show everybody how cool this thing really is. All right, let's put it in. See how we do it. Got four little clips on the bottom that rest on our framing. Stand up. Okay, we're in. We're on. And now we're in. Look at that, Jordan. Wow. Sweet. You know what this is? Purple drywall. The first piece of drywall. Oh, the first project. <laughs> oh true. <laughs> All our viewers' favorite level. Looks perfect. Yep. Well, we set every piece of wood right here with a level, so with a laser. With I a hope laser. it'd be perfect. Right. Cool. You want to screw it in? Yep. All right, sweet. Check that out guys, first access panel installed and look how cool it works. Push, it opens, there's a little cable with a carabiner on each side, I already have this one on the right loose. Then open it further, take off your carabiner, then it can come all the way down like that, or you can lift and remove the whole panel, which is what we're gonna have to do, but that's awesome. Cool. Let me put this guy back. And so these little latches in here, they're called push to close. You've probably seen those on some kitchen cabinets before. It's latched. Love it. That's going to look so cool once the drywall's here, everything's painted, and all you're going to see is that little line between right. the, the panel and the drywall. Lights up top. It's going to look pretty sweet. This is a busy little area right here. you got three access panels, all the reveals, your plenum over there with the little slot diffuser, the LEDs here. It's busy. There is so much going on right here. But now you know why we had to make the drawing. Right. And why this wall almost had to be the last one we framed because we had to figure out a lot of stuff. But now that we figured this wall out, it's time to head over there and do that one. But that one's going to be a little different. Of course. Why would it be the same? Let's hop off the scaffold. Go hit it. Yeah, we need more wood. Awesome. 1.3 and a half. 
143 and up. We got this wall all padded out and it was super easy. We just picked up some 14 foot two by fours, ripped them in half and then put them on there. So the inch and a half dimension was always the same, padding it out an inch and a half towards me. It's exactly what we needed. As you can see, Rad's up there dialing in the ledger strip, the top of our padded out wall for the LED. So we matched the detail on this side of the wall. Now we had it done and we all came down and we noticed that the gap between the top of our ledge and the bottom of the trusses wasn't parallel. This side was like an eighth off, we can live with that. Your eye's never gonna pick it up, but here it was more than that, like an inch. So we're not sure why that gap is four on one end and five on the other. We built this thing with lasers, it should be good, but that's one thing we're learning on this build. So what we did, we just raised the left-hand side so we have a consistent four inch gap all the way across. Not gonna rely on our trusty laser in this situation, but at least it told us we were off. So we're almost done with this wall, all padded out, a couple of little blocks to put in for the shower door and the framing is complete. All right, so we're moving that intake grill just like we said we would, but we're having trouble fastening it to the stud because it's way in the corner. So we took the stud out, built it on the ground. Now we're gonna reattach the whole thing as one unit. Well, not we, the. <laughs> Cool. All right, make up the duck, right? Yeah. Are we doing that now? Probably should. Inspections All right. on Thursday. Inspections on Thursday. All right, guys, with the installation of this slot diffuser, that completes all the framing and installation of those kind of items on this wall. Remember, we've got two more access panels, just like this custom one right here. Again, a big shout out, a huge thanks to Williams Brothers Access Doors. Their website is wbdoors.com. If you want to check them out, they have many, many different kinds of access doors. Not just this kind with the push to open or this new one right here. I'm going to show you this one. They wanted to send us this one to show you because this one's really cool. It's called a Phantom because once it's installed, it totally disappears. Now this one's 5 8 drywall because that's what we have here, but they make half and everything else, of course. So this is a ceiling installation. Let me put it together and I'll show you how it works. It's time, guys, to start putting in better access doors, right? We're all tired of those cheap plastic ones and different ways of opening them. But just imagine that's in your ceiling. And once it's painted, it's going to disappear and it's just going to be a lift to open. You can set it like that to the side or take it out. Sweet. I really love that. And of course, your drywall guys are going to tape all this, right? And then you're going to paint it on paint day and it's going to disappear. And so again, guys, if you need access panels, wbdoors.com has got you covered. You know, Jordan, we've had this running joke around the job site, right? That one day we're going to be standing up here or downstairs and we're going to say to ourselves and each other, guys, I think we're ready. We've driven every nail. We've run every wire. We've put in every nail plate and we can finally have that inspection. Well, I think the day is here and fingers crossed we pass inspection. So stay tuned for the video because in the next 10 seconds, you're going to find out if we passed or not. All right, gang, we just told you that the inspector was coming on Thursday. Well, today is Thursday. He just left and drum roll, we passed 100%. That's awesome. Now we have this whiteboard over here that we put video ideas on. A couple of weeks ago, Jordan wrote this on, on here. Possible inspection fail. We can make a video of all the things we failed on our inspection. Well, and then fix it. And then fix it in right. the video. Popular videos, right? Well, bud, I guess we can cross that one out. We don't have to do it. You'll have to think of another video to make. Yeah, so we passed our very first major inspection on our very first build ever. No big deal, I'll give myself a pat on the back. Kudos to Rad and Jordan also, nice. we're a team. But we get a lot of comments about why we aren't posting. And guys, building a house for the first time, there are so many decisions to be made. So much going on behind the scenes. Jordan, let's fill them in with what we're doing. Okay. What is our next step? Well, I guess our next step, we get to cover up right. all this work right. we've been working on for 
nine months. That's right. We get so to cover. So nobody's ever going to see it again. The inspection is essentially a green light to cover everything up, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Cover everything up. That means roof, insulation, drywall, siding, all that fun stuff, which is going to be cool for us because we'll get to see a lot of change really fast. Yep. So what's our next step? Let's fill them in on all those things you just mentioned cool. and where we are. So our next step, soffit and fascia. Did you finally pick something? Yes. We have landed <laughs> on a soffit and fascia material. It's actually ordered. It'll be here next week on Wednesday. So we are ready to go. Yeah, we got a week off, boys. And then after that is the roof. Correct. Did you pick a roof? We did pick a roof. Went round and yes. around. <laughs> so we've got the roof ready to go. We've got the roofers ready to go. They're lined up. Everything is, is in place and ready. So they're just waiting on us for the soffit and fascia. Then they're here putting on the roof. Yeah, like we got the sample right here. Pretty sweet. Awesome. Love that stuff. Yep. And then after the roof, insulation, right? Insulation. Big we, day. We could do insulation before that because we are dried in and this is a zip system, you know, monopoly frame. We probably could get away with insulating right now, but let's just be smart and, and not insulate. And why, yeah. don't, why don't we want to insulate before we get the roof on? Yeah, well, the roofer said, you know, you're going to put the roof on, all those nails are coming through. It'd be better for him to come in with the spray foam and seal all those openings. Right. Instead right. of a nail potentially causing some damage or blowing it off. Great I don't think what happened, but yeah. that's really the right order. That's a great point. So insulation. And speaking of insulation, it's picked out. It's ready to go. We've got the material. We've got the guys. We, everything is lined up and ready to go. And it's a brand new product. Can't yep. wait to show you. Stay tuned for that video. It's going to yes. be awesome. Yes. And remember, this whole garage, everything gets spray foam. It does. Above us, all these walls, under the stairs, all upstairs. Yeah. It's going to completely change how this place sounds. And feels. And feels. Yeah, for sure. All right. Insulation ready to go? Yep. What's after that? We're going to drywall. Drywall, Which, which is so finally. fun. <laughs> and the drywall is ready to go. Our drywall guy is going to travel down here. He's, we're very excited to hang drywall. Mm -hmm. And that's all lined up, ready to go. After drywall, we're going to be doing an epoxy coating on the garage floor because that is the time to do it before paint and after drywall. Okay. And this is it right here. This is the samples. So we've got that ready to go. Are we going with that color? Uh, yeah. Cool. Like a black and a gray and a white. Uh, this is actually glow in the dark. This is a blue glow in the dark and this is a green glow in the dark. I think that's pretty sweet. So, um, you that's know, we. We got a friend coming from Louisiana to do that, so that's exciting. So that's all lined up. Yeah, and that's gonna look great with a certain white car sitting on top of it. <laughs> Correct. And then of course, while all this is going on, we can be siding the entire house. So we can be siding here and there and, and doing that. So that's gonna be a massive drastic mm -hmm. change for this place. And we're technically ready to start siding right now. And we can start working on the back porch and finishing the back porch with the decking material, the posts, and the lighting and all of that. So there's a lot to be done. Uh, the only thing that we don't have chosen is the deck material. So got to pick that, but plenty you, of time. And you told me you want to paint the soffit and fascia before the roofers get here. Yes. So we're not cutting into the drip edge. Yes, we are going so to be painting. We could look, be looking at some paint here real quick. Yeah, we got to go pick out a paint color and do that next week because uh, we're going to be painting next week. The exterior of the house, very excited. Super, super excited. Yeah. So that's going to be a wrap for this video, gang. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Put an awesome access panel over your like button. Open it, smash it for us. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you get a notification of our very next video. Have a Merry Christmas and we'll see you on the very next Stud Pack video where we're finally turning the corner on this project.